Good morning, and welcome to the Crafty Canary for your tip on Tuesday. Today I have a really fun crafty tip that's going to involve repurposing an old sheet. Now, my husband has this queen size pillow that he really loves. It's a bamboo pillow and it's really squishy and soft and he loves it. And I purchased some pillowcases when he got the pillow um, because it's queen size, so it's much larger. It's about 30 by 20, so it's much larger than a regular standard size pillow. So we got these special pillowcases and for one, I mean, I've had them for a long time and not really changed them, but they always bother me because they're kind of a funky color. I have brown sheets in my bedroom because I have a brown and blue color scheme in there. Now, of course, you don't have to match your sheets to your color scheme in your bedroom, but I do. And this is, as you can see, compared to this sheet, it's a really funky, almost pinky brown. And so I've never really liked them, but I've kept them because I've paid money for them and I'm cheap and I don't want to go back and buy more if I've already paid money for them. But we've had them for several years and they have really just been uh, through the ringer. I mean, they really haven't been um, used any more or worse than our normal pillowcases, but they've worn out really badly. I've already surged the top because the top was fraying and now we have some holes here, so I've decided I'm gonna toss these and make some new pillowcases. And I have an old sheet, um, you know how you have those, especially after 22 years of marriage, you have maybe sheet sets that one of them wore out and you have the flat sheet or you still have the fitted sheet. And we just have sheets that are still good, but maybe we don't have the whole set in our um, coat closet and we use them, you know, to put over furniture if we've been outside to keep the furniture from getting stinky because we're dirty or things like that to use on uh, the air mattress if a guest is here, uh, things like that. But this one is in really good shape. It's brown like my other sheet. So I wanna use it to make a pillowcase for this big pillow. Now I've made pillow cases in the past. Here's one that I made a long time ago and it actually could use maybe <laughs> being remade because it's kind of fraying on the edges, but not too bad. But what I do is I take uh, a measurement for this main body of the pillowcase, and then you do a cuff, about three and a half or four inches. And you can also do, this one I used a satiny ribbon, just about an inch and a half wide ribbon, double it and sew it into the seam of that cuff. So that's what I had planned to do for these and I had it all measured out. I measured what I needed for that big pillow, measured what I needed for the cuff and was gonna get some brown ribbon for the little um, ribbon here. But when I started working with my sheet, I realized, hey, wait a minute, the sheet itself has a cuff on it already. It's sewn in, it doesn't have the nice little ribbon, but that's okay. If I make some more um, with the rest of the sheet at the end, I will, um, get a ribbon and make it look nice like that, but it's fine. I won't have to cut two separate pieces or sew in a ribbon. I can just use the cuff that's on here. And then as I was working with it, I also discovered that the width of the sheet is about half of what I need to make this pillowcase. So I'm gonna be able to make two because I like to have one and then be able to have another one in the wash. So what I did is lengthwise, I just doubled this sheet put it on my uh, cutting table. You may not have a cutting table. You can use the dining room table. If it's a really nice table and you don't wanna scratch it, make sure you put a cutting board or something down on it to protect it. But I've put it on my cutting table and I've doubled it and I've measured the length that I need. For this pillow, I'm gonna use 36 inches. It's gonna be um, about 35 and a half finished because I wanna have a half inch seam allowance at the bottom. So I've measured down and marked 36 inches. I'm gonna take my marking pencil and draw a line on those 36 inch marks that I made. And then I'm just gonna cut that out, cut where I've doubled it, and I'll have two pieces about 40 and a half by 36. And then I'll come back and show you how I sew it together. So I have cut my pillowcase and now I have pinned it together. I've taken it and folded it in half. Here's the upper cuff and pinned it together on the side. And I'm also gonna pin it together down on the bottom because I'm gonna sew a seam on the bottom and then up one side. So let me pin that together. But also wanna tell you that what it works out to is about as I measure across with it doubled, it works out to 21 cut. 
Now, I want it to be about 20 and a half because my pillow is 20 inches wide and I want it to have some ease so that the pillow will actually go into the pillowcase. So if I did it exactly 20 inches, it might be too tight and not go down in there. And you always want, you can err on the side of too big much better than you want to err on the side of too small because if it's too small and doesn't fit, you can't go back and add fabric. But if it's too big, you can go back and um, cut your seam a little bit or even it won't be that big of a deal if it's a little bit too big. So what I wanna do is a half inch, so it works out to be, when it's doubled, 20 and a half. And then on the bottom, I'll do the same, a half inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to use my serger because it goes ahead, sews a seam, and finishes the seam at the same time so that my uh, seam won't ravel. Every time I wash it, I don't wanna have strings coming out in my wash with this pillowcase. But if you don't have a serger, you can do it on your regular machine, do a straight stitch, and then go back and zigzag along the edge so that it won't ravel. That will really help prevent raveling, and that's what I did for years before I had a serger. Um, but since I have a serger, I'm gonna use that. So I'm gonna go to my half inch mark on my serger, and it will also cut and finish the seam at the same time. Now for the seam of the side. threads that hang off a little bit and if I were using a regular machine a straight stitch I would be able to back stitch on these seams but a serger most sergers mine doesn't anyway allow you to back stitch so I have to do something in order to make sure that these seams these ends of the seams are not going to come out and what I will do is use the same thread on my regular machine and just do a little straight stitch at the end and beginning of each seam or I can use a product um, that will, I mean, you could use fabric glue or you can use a product like, um, I think it's called Fray Check that's kind of like a glue and it's a, it dries clear and you put it on the end of the seam and it hardens it a little bit, but it will keep it from coming out and raveling. So we'll do that and then come back in a minute and I'll show you how it looks. So I'm finished and I've put it in the, the pillow in the pillowcase. So here's my finished pillowcase. It fits great, pretty nice and fitted, not too much bigger on this end. I don't like them when they're, you know, way longer than the pillow, but not too short so that your pillow's sticking out either. So this will be great. We'll see tonight if my husband notices that he has new pillowcases. <laughs> Do you think he will? We'll see. If you have any questions, like if it's if the measuring and trying to figure out how you need to cut the pillowcase is difficult for you, go ahead and ask them in the comments or you can get in touch with me at facebook.com slash crafty canary and ask me any questions. Let me know if you've tried this and how it turned out and come back next week and we'll have another great tip on Tuesday. Thanks. See you next time.